Shalom, everyone. Welcome. I'm glad to be here. I am so excited. I'm excited just thinking about you people that I haven't seen in so so many years and, and thinking about your family and how all your families have must have really grown up. I miss all your children. I just love to, love to hug you. Just, I would just love to hug you. Anyway, um, let's uh, let's open up in prayer. And what, what I normally do in my normal group is I, I uh, open in prayer and then I speak and uh, we everybody prays in tongues for a minute or two. So let's uh, let's open in prayer, please. Lord Father God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We come to you in prayer and thanksgiving, asking your blessings on this word. Bless it. Bless this word that that, that it be anointed by you. That, that we would receive something, some encouragement, some and what you have. Help us to prove to everybody that you are the God, our God, in our heart, filled with with the love. For you. We thank you for it, Lord Father God. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the Ephraimites. We thank you for the Ephraimites that are known, that are unknown. Bless them, Lord. Bless them with all that they need and the word that they need. Bless the leadership as we celebrate this Sabbath day, which is a commandment that you gave to us, a day of rest, a day that you gave to us to honor us. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you. We ask your blessings on the prophets as they go about hearing your word to deliver to us the direction that you want us to go. We ask your blessings on the prophets, Lord. Bless them and their families. We also thank you for the power and authority that you gave to us to bind up Satan and all his cohorts. Yes, Satan, you are bound. You and the cards are bound in the name of Jesus. You really have no part of us. We release and loose the Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, correct us, teach us into your holy word. We thank you for it. And they all said, Amen. In the Jesus' name we pray. We thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it. You know, I'm going to... Uh, it's so good to be here. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. It's so good to be loved by the Lord. It's so good to understand the Lord. But I'm going to say shalom to you. Now, I'm a, I'm, it's, shalom is one of my favorite words. And for a long time, I didn't really know what it meant. But I found, I got a new Bible. It's called a One New Man Bible. And the back of that's got a big glossary. In that glossary, it's got the definition of shalom. I'm going to read that to you. I'm going to read part of it too. The full meaning of shalom means complete. There is tranquility, justice. There's enough food. There's enough clothing. There's enough housing. It means divine health, no sickness. Shalom means an absence of disorder, injustice, bribery, corruption, conflict, lack, hatred, abuse, violence, pain, suffering, immorality, and all other negative forces. When shalom reigns, there will be no immorality and no injustice. The principles advocated in Torah will be followed by all. Then the command to love your neighbor will be made complete. Well, like I said, shalom is one of my most favorite words, and I use it a lot, almost every day. So I especially say shalom again to you and welcome. This all leads us to the shalom of Jerusalem. Now, I'm going to read you uh, Psalms 122, 6 and 9, which you don't, don't turn there. I'm just going to read it to you. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the Shalom of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace, number seven. 
peace within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions sakes, I will now say peace within be within me. Because of the house of the Lord, God, our God, I will seek thy good. Now, another, so that takes care of that. Now, if we turn to Luke 4.18, Luke 4.18, you know, there is so much, there is so much to say today. I got nine pages of notes. Normally in my normal meeting, I can't get past four pages. So this ought to be exciting. And I got more to say than just what's on my notes. So anyway, but think about this. Uh, I thought about this a couple of weeks ago and I was on the phone with a friend, a dear friend of mine the other day. And he reminded me of this same verse that I thought of a couple of weeks ago. And I, I mentioned I, I, I read the same verse a couple of weeks ago, but then I, I misplaced it and I forgot it. So I went back and looked at my notes and I'll be darned, I wrote it down a couple of weeks ago. If you say this verse, look in the mirror and say this verse to yourself or to say it to anybody else. Luke 4, 18, 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel of, to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now that's all our commission. He, God has commissioned us all for those verses right there. So if you say that to yourself in the mirror, I said, wow, what an impact you could, what an impact you could have on your own self, preaching to yourself, looking at it. That's me, that's my job, that's who I'm supposed to be. And, and you welcome it. Now, let me interrupt myself and say this. I ran across this and I don't know how I did this. I ran across this in the Bible the other day. I wanna share this. Um, Job, the book of Job, or the person Job, is actually the third son of Issachar, or Issachar. Uh, Issachar, I think, is the proper pronunciation. That's one of J uh, Jacob's 12 sons whom we get, um, who we get the 12 tribes from. And you'll find that in Genesis 46, 13, the son I'm going to read the verse to you. The son of Issachar, Tola, Pruva, Job, and Shimron. You always wondered who in the heck's Job? Well, I think that's that's it right there. Now I want to give you another another uh, another note here. Uh, you don't need to turn there, but we're going to, I'm going to read Jeremiah 31, 9 to you. I'm going to read the last part of that verse because I think it's so important. I think it's absolutely wonderful, mind-boggling, important. Um, the last part of Jeremiah 31, 9 tells us Ephraim is God's firstborn. Ephraim is God's firstborn. Oh, what does that mean? Now, the firstborn means favored child. Firstborn is the one who received the birthright and the inheritance. Now, Ephraim is, Ephraim is God's firstborn. We receive the inheritance. What is the inheritance? The promises of God, the promises to Abraham. That's us. Now, you can, um, you can find you can find the definition of, of the inheritance and birthright in Deuteronomy 21, 15, 17. We're not gonna turn there, but just uh, write it down. You can look up what that inheritance and that birthright means. Uh, it means it to us now, to the main topic, to the main topic that I've prepared for today. Um, Satan, who is he? Mm, my gosh, we know this world is upside down inside out and every which it's turned every which way but loose it's a mess and we know satan is well and working really hard to help that aspect along satan 
Now, in John 10.10 10 is, is, is a, one of the most powerful verses, both the front of that verse and the back of that verse. Now, the back of that verse is what ta Jesus talks about. I come along and give you abundance, abundance. Now, that's preaching all by itself. Uh, I found out after I was, did this study, I started looking up abundance. And I said, oh, my gosh, that needs to be the next, next sermon, I believe. John 10.10, 10, the thief referring to the devil, comes not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. More abundantly. The devil is coming to kill, steal, and destroy. I can, I can still see Prophet Decker standing up there in that podium and that, uh, and that behind that bema and telling us the devil is coming after you. He said he's not going to let Ephraim, the firstborn, Walk, walk through this without being attacked. And my gosh, we've been attacked. We've been attacked. We've been attacked. Now, Prophet Decker was a man of God. Ain't no doubt about that. Uh, he heard from God. He taught us. He taught us. You know, the, the thing about Prophet Decker was he taught us so darn much and, and he had such a way about him. He had correct us. Oh my gosh. And, but then he would love us right he would love us right the next minute. He would love us. So we knew we were loved by him. But you know, we misunderstood a lot of some, some of the things he said. I really believe that. We misunderstood what he was saying. He was a man of God. I, oh, I miss him still. Now, Satan is our adversary. And Prophet Decker said that. He told us that. He taught us that. And the devil and his cohorts. Now, let's read the... Um, Let's read um, 1 Peter 5.8. Um, I'm going to read it to you. You don't need to turn there unless you want to, but I'm going to read it. 1 Peter 5.8. Be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who he may devour. That's, he, he's, trying to, he's trying to devour you and I. You know, the devil hates us with everything that he is. Everything that he's about, he hates us. He wants us killed. And it says devour. Roaring lion. Now, I remember, I remember Prophet Decker standing up there in that podium and says, yeah, the, he's a roaring lion, but he doesn't have no teeth. I didn't understand that. And I don't understand it today because he has teeth. That devil, Satan himself, is trying to kill us, you and me, and all Ephraimites. Anything that stands with God, he's going to be interfering, and he's an accuser, a murderer, a liar, and the book says it. And Jesus said, I, but I come to give, to have life and more abundantly. Prophet Decker said, the lion's got no teeth. He's got teeth. We all know that now. We know that he comes after us. He's not going to gum us to death. He's going to chew on us to death if we let him. But you know, the thing about it is, I'm going to prove to you today, we have power and authority over the devil. He's under our feet. He's defeated. If you, if you claim the word, if you live by the word, the whole word, if you live for God, with God, with the counsel of God, the devil's not going to bother you. He's going to walk away from you. Decker, Prophet Decker said that. He's going to, he'll say, I'm going to go down the road. These people, I can't bother. It's the truth. Now, Luke uh, 22, 31, Jesus doing the talking here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Jesus told Peter that Satan was trying to sift him as wheat. Now, that tells us right there, Satan was well and alive when Jesus was walking the earth. Uh, 
Luke 22, 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. My gosh. Jesus prayed to prevent that. Prayed. He prayed to prevent that. Satan, the accuser of the brethren. The brethren, that's you and me. Sisters. It's to bring us he accuses us so that we might be tested. What is in our heart? Um, let's go to Revelations 12, 9 through 10, please. Revelations 12, 9 through 10. We're going to go back to 1 Peter 5, 8 after this. So I oh, hope you kept your finger there. Anyway, Revelations 12, 9, and the great dragon was cast out and the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. The cohorts, the demons, the evil spirits. The, the great dragon, that's the devil, that's Satan. The old serpent, that's the devil, that's Satan deceiveth the whole world. Verse 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation to us, strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Satan is called a roaring lion. He does a lot of roaring. But if you protect yourself, he doesn't have teeth. We have the power and authority and the word to protect ourselves. So that means he doesn't get to chew on us. But if we protect him, he's going to come to kill us. He hates us. You can see hatred in the world today. It's such a mess. You can see the hatred there. There's so many. There's so many authorities that have fallen that, and they're filled with Satan. Satan's leading them. Satan's leading them. The whole world's upside down. You know, I can't imagine. I, I really enjoy reading history, and, and I wish I knew more about history. But the, the time in the past would probably would, would compare to today would be uh, the emperor or Nehru over there in Europe, over there in Europe, what he was probably the meanest man alive. You think about, we don't remember, we're all too young to remember World War II, but you know, there was 53, over 53 million people died during, during the course of that war and the aftermath of that war, 53 million people. And right now, the whole world's upside down. The whole world has turned their back. Well, a big part of the world's turned their back on God. A lot of people out there need to be introduced to God and the Son, Yeshua. Now, 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11. I'm going to read that one. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, there it is again, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Another version says, seeking whom he may kill. Think about that, kill. You know, do we think of him properly? He's a killer. Um, verse 9, whom... whom Resist steadfast in the faith or, or resist him in the faith. Knowing that the same afflictions are coming brethren that are in the world. We're going to be attacked. You and I, Ephraimites, are going to be attacked. But we have the last word. We have the last laugh. We win. We win if we speak the proper words, if we're living by the word of God. If we have the word of God in our heart, how we look it up to know it. Now, but 10, but the God of all grace who hath called us into his eternal glory 
by Christ Jesus, by the Messiah. After that, you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Satan is a murderer. And he's the father of all lies, as we're going to find out in John 8.44. John 8.44. Murderer and the father of all lies. Now, you know what? The Bible talks about murderers. A murderer shall not live. You're going to put him to death. Well, so eventually, Satan's going to be totally subdued. But he's going to be ruined here in the darkness. He's not going to rule in the light. He can't rule in the light. He has no authority to rule in the light. You and I are in the light. Uh, John, John 8, 44. Ye are your father, the, the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Satan, the devil, is the father of all lies. Lies. I mean, you know, in, in, in Prophet Becker, he, he, did a, he did a sermon on the imagination. And imagination is in our head, in our mind. And he said, and Prophet Becker said, that's the biggest playground the devil has, is our imagination. And my gosh, it's the truth. It's the truth. We can, if we don't conform and live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, you know, that's in the Bible three times. It's in the, uh, it's in Deuteronomy. It's in Matthew 4.4. 4. It's Mark, Luke. Matthew, Mark. It's Luke 4.4. 4. You shall live by Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Do we have that much in us? If we don't, we need to get it there. We need to study and study and read and read. This world is upside down. I, you know, I don't have a TV. I don't, and the radios down here in Kentucky are, uh, well, there's a lot of redneck stuff. And then there's, you got some Christian radios on there. I'm telling you what, there's, um, sometimes you're, it, pretty, it comes down pretty interesting. I was listening. Turn the radio on last week. I'm driving a truck somewhere. Turn the radio on. It happened to be on a Christian station, and there were three guys were talking about they were building some kind of a road up this mountain. They had this cement semi semi uh, cement truck going up this road, except they couldn't make this one last turn. They couldn't get it. They tried and cried, and it's almost going over the edge of the mountain. And so. They're all Christian men, and so this one guy says, there's only one way. We're either going to go make this curve or we're going to dump out this cement. And this one guy says, no, 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 no. I, we might not be able to get it up there, but I know who can. I said, we will pray and get that cement truck around that curve. So he bent down in the road, almost in the way of the cement truck, almost closed his eyes and started praying. Cement driver, cement truck driver got in the truck and just inched his way around that mountain, right up that mountain, and just inches from that guy's head. And that guy didn't have no idea that that truck was that close to him. He was so involved in that prayer, he prayed that truck up and around that mountain. Got it? They got it there. Ah, he's a Christian man. He didn't believe. He, I don't believe they were keeping Torah. But anyway, that's that's pretty interesting story. And uh, one of the witnesses on that said, they said they've never seen anybody pray like that before. So involved that he was oblivious to the danger to himself. Anyway, let's go on. As Prophet Decker says, let's go on. Uh, let me find my place here. Satan is the God of this world. He controls the earth except for the Messiah subdued him. He's put him under his feet. But you have to believe in the Messiah to have control over Satan. You have to be born again, and you need to be spirit-filled, spirit-filled, praying in tongues. I would tell my group over and over and over and over, week after week, prayer in the spirit is our nuclear weapon. It's our nuclear weapon, prayer. I don't care what you're doing, you just go to prayer. And as Prophet Decker said, this one old lady, she must have been, he said, I think she must have been about 80 years old when he was a young man. Whatever problem was coming up in the church and that 
somewhere along the line, the problem would get to that lady. And she says, well, let's, let's pray. Let's just pray. I'll never forget it. Just let, we need to do that. Brothers and sisters, we need to pray. Turn it over to God. You know, God created this earth for you and I. He created, God created heaven for himself. He created heaven and all that, 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 all that there is about heaven, it's gold roads and pearls and whatever all that is. And the colors, uh, keep hearing about the colors and the, the, the water pure, it's so pure, the light, you keep hearing. He created that for himself and his angels. But he created the earth and all that there is about this earth for you and I. He created it to give it to us. And let's go to, let's, let's go to Genesis. I want to prove this to you. Genesis 1, um, uh, let's go to 26, Genesis 1, 26. We're going to read up into 28, I think. Um, I, I can't help but go here. I, I just can't help it. It's, it's just so marvelous. It's just, and God said, 26, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. God said, let's make man in our image and our likeness. Think about those two words, image and likeness. We are like God. We are like God. We are in the image of God. And let's go. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over the every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so God created man in his own image again, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them, and God 28, and God blessed them, and God said, Let he said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, subdue the earth, <coughs> excuse me, and have dominion over the fish in the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You and I, he gave us dominion over it. He gave us, he gave Adam and Eve the dominion over the earth. He created the earth for us. He loved us so much. He wanted us to have our own haven. He's got heaven and he loved us so much that he created that for us so he could commune with us, so he could care for us, so he could love us. God was so full of love that he did that for us. He created us in his own image if we would obey him. Just do what you're told. Prophet Decker says, son, just do what you're told to do. Just do what you're told to do. And if we would do that, and the book tells us what to do, he loves us. Now, if we go to John 3, 16, I, I can't help but go here. I got to go here. Um, God, so John 3, 16, we all know that front words and backwards probably. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He wanted to save the world. He wanted to save you and I. He wanted to save anybody and everybody. He wanted everybody to be saved, that it would believe in him. We have to believe in him to have the power and authority. But we have power and authority if we believe in him. Uh, and 28, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. There it is, the whole thing right there. Prove to you right there that you got dominion over Satan. You got dominion over this earth. You got dominion. What, and then we get to go to heaven. If you believe in the Son of God, right there, right there. But the world is upside down, and we can see that we know it. And my gosh, that and they're confusing. They're telling us lies over and over. I don't have a TV. I don't have much of a radio. But what I do here, there's there's lies upon lies upon lies. Satan is 
is working overtime to destroy what God has given to us. People out there need to be introduced to the Messiah and to the covenant. It's simple as that. Well, let's go on to, the, to our lesson. I'm getting off track here, but what a track to get off onto, boy, I'll tell you what. Um, where am I at now? Uh, John 14.30, John 14.30, powerful verse here, powerful, powerful. You know, you and I are the most powerful things on this earth when we have Messiah, God in our heart. There's nothing stronger. Nothing can beat us. Nothing. But we have to, we have to be obedient to the Lord. We have to be obedient to his covenant. We have to be obedient to his Torah. John 14, 30, Jesus speaking to his disciples, hereafter I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. Okay. John 16, 7 through 11. We're on page four now. Oh, my goodness. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is uh, John 16, 7 through 11. 7, 11. I remember Prophet Decker talking about that. He had us turn to some book, and then 7 Eleven, then another book right after that, and 7 Eleven. Yeah, as well. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you to go that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will reprove the world of sin. The Holy Spirit will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not in me. The world doesn't believe in the Messiah of righteousness because I go to the Father and ye see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. God is the judge of this world. I mean, he's a judge of you and I, so. But we are to live by every word that proceedeth out the mouth of God. If we're doing that, we win. We're winners. Our nuclear war, we win. Push the button first, we win. Now, so the devil is a slanderer and the arch enemy of God. And you know that the next, the other enemy, the arch enemy of, of Satan is you and I. Now, Satan can't win against God, but Satan hates God. He hates God. But he thinks he has power over you and I. So he's going to attack us and attack us and attack us until we throw him out. And the thing about it is faith, faith. Now, there was a, a man of God a few years ago holding a meeting. His name was Lester Summerall. And he says to the audience, he says, what is faith? What is faith? Wow, what a statement. So, I mean, everybody's got to think about that a minute. Faith, I mean, the Bible teaches faith constantly. Faith, faith, faith. And then all of a sudden he says, faith is nothing more than trust. Do you trust your Messiah? Do you trust the word of God with all your heart, with all your being? If we trust that God is absolutely good, we win. <laughs> it's really simple. It's we win. I mean, it's so much fun. But we have to be living the word of God. We have to be living, breathing the word of God constantly. We, we're in this world. Don't be of the world. That's verse. I uh, don't know where it's at. I didn't write it down. But uh, so the devil is a slander and the arch enemy of God and of you and I. His origination is not 100% known, except that we know that Isaiah, uh, we're not going to turn there, Isaiah 14, 12 through 20, and Ezekiel 28, 12 through 19, it talks about Satan and his whatever that is. Isaiah 14, 12 through 20, Ezekiel 28, 12 through 19, and 
God made the angels to be holy. Now, I'm, I'm under the understanding that they don't have the capacity to, to love, but God is love. But God loved so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who's, he loved us on this world. He created this world for us to, dom, to have dominion over. And he threw Satan down here to get him out of his hair from up in heaven because he's at a war. He warred with God and God got tired of it. He says, get down here. And, but he put us here after that, after that, and he gave us dominion over Satan, except man has a way of falling short of the word of God. Man has a way he's going to corrupt himself as possible can. So, and as we can see in this world, with all the stuff going on, Satan is working really hard through man. And of course, money controls the earth. Money, money, money. But that's another verse I didn't write down. Evil. Satan started out as Lucifer. Now, Lucifer, <laughs> God created Lucifer. He was an angel of God. Lucifer was a holy, holy name. God made Lucifer, created him, made him the highest and most beautiful cherub in heaven. Lucifer was known as the son of the morning, the light bearer. He was made with instruments, musical instruments in his being. He had pipes in him, he had tabarets or whatever they, those are called. He was known basically as a music man, music person. Pipes like an organ, he became a living instrument. But then Lucifer became prideful he tried to exalt himself above God and rebelled against and rebelled against God. As, um, okay, I guess we're going to read Isaiah 14, 12, and 20. Yeah, we're going to read it. Um, 12, 14, 12 of Isaiah. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou? cut down to the ground, which did us weaken the nations. Well, we can see that so powerful today. The nations are weakened, the people. And that's amazing. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just amazed that the people around the world are not protesting more. They're not rebelling against tyranny. They're allowing it. I'm just amazed. But then again, we have been lied to by the powers that be. We've been lied to since I was a kid. I remember when, when President Kennedy was shot and killed in Dallas, Texas, and whoever did it got away with it. And the government lied to us about who did it. And that's been proven that it's the government lied to us. And then right after that, right within days of that, we was over there in Vietnam fighting a war, killing a lot of people and getting killed and spending millions and billions of dollars. And that was a lie, except they were really fighting. But the cause of the war was a lie. And people in our, in our government voted for that war knowing that it was a lie. I didn't find that out for years later, but it's the truth. We've been lied to and lied to so much, we just believe it. We believe all these lies now. So there goes our there goes our protest. We've given up our rights freely. We've given up our rights freely. Just take them over, take over, take over. You know, I was invited to a a, a, a political rally years ago. Back I must have been in my early thirties, and there was five seven hundred invitations to this political rally by a senator or a representative where I was living at. And there was only several hundred people showed up and the, and the senator, the politician come out and said, with such a short list of people that showed up, he says, you know, what you're telling me is you don't care what I do with your money. And that has stuck with me because people have not paid attention to politics. They haven't paid attention to who's corrupt and who's not corrupt. 
They haven't voted. They haven't taken care of themselves. If you can't take care of yourselves, nobody's going to take care. They're going to take, they're going to abuse you. If you don't take care of yourself, you're going to be abused. And the way to take care of ourselves is by and through the word of God. That's as simple as that. Now, let me, let's go on here. I get carried away here. Thou, uh, we're going to go on 13. Thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Now, notice, I will ascend into heaven. Again, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. 16, they that see that see thee shall narrow, narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? Did that did shake the kingdoms? Now notice here in, in 13 and 14, Satan says, I will five times. I will, I will, I will. Five times. He's gonna he's violating God. God got tired of it and thought it didn't take God long to fight. To get rid of him didn't take long now you know it brings to mind again uh, in the nighttime I, I quite often play one of uh, prophet decker's cds and we're playing now a series called the sin of fear in the latter days latter days or latter times something like that and in that cd in that cd says something about god in the beginning um, when man violated a law of God, he got rid of them, put them to death. Man picked up stones, he got stoned in a couple other incidents. He had very little patience, but see, we weren't, he was trying to introduce the law to us and see, trying to introduce the severity of the law, trying to make us fearful of God, to love God with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, all our soul, but to fear him in order way to fear him. If we, if we know we're going to be put away, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna sin. We're not gonna disobey him. We're gonna obey him. He wanted us to obey him. He loved us so much. He wanted to take care of us if we would let him take care of us. He would love us. He would take care of us. He would protect us. He would provide for us. All we had to do is obey. Just do what I tell you to do, son. Now I want to I want to tell you something else. This is off track, but I want to tell you, when, you're ch when you have children, when you have relatives, when you see somebody about ready to make a mistake, don't let them make that mistake. Correct them, show them, talk to them. Because learning how to, learning how to do something by making a mistake doesn't necessarily te teach you what you need to learn. You, you learn you made a mistake, but you don't necessarily learn all the ins and outs about that mistake. So counsel your children, counsel your relatives, counsel your brothers and sisters. If they're about to make a mistake, they're not saying, ah, as pro brother, pro as brother prophet Steve said, nah, I said, yeah, I wouldn't do it that way. I can't quite get that accent he's got, but uh, talk to him, coach him. We all need coaching. We all need to be loved. So if you love them, teach them, teach them correctness. Now let's go on. Okay, where was I at? I'm on a whole page of lit reading here. We're 46. I'm going to have to skip something. So we're in Isaiah 16. So we're going to go to 17. We're talking about Lucifer again. Talking about the, the evilness of this world, which is everybody can see it, everybody. So we know we have to fight it. And we know I'm proved to you we win. I proved to you already today. I proved it to you. 17 that made the world as wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners satan's going to keep us he's going to kill us he's going to hide us he's going to do away with us but thou art cast out of, of thy grave like an abomination abomination branch and as the remnant of those that are slain thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land, slain thy people, and the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Okay, that's Satan. 
killer, a liar, a thief. He hates us with a passion, and we are the firstborn. We have all the power and authority that God ever gave anybody. We have all the power and authority that Moses had, and he had the most powerful man on earth at, of that time. Act like him. We are to act like Jesus Christ himself, the Messiah. Imitate him. He walked on water. Uh, uh, what verse is it? Uh, John 14, 12, or 12, 14. The works that I do shall ye do in greater works than these. We're going to do greater works than Jesus did, the Messiah. Think about it. We're not doing them yet, but we need to be starting. We need to be thinking about it. We need to read that verse and think about it. We need to look in that mirror and say, I am a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And we start acting like it. Okay, we're going to skip a little bit of here. Um, now, Revelations 12, 3 and 4, short verses here. We're going to read that. Um, when, when, when Lucifer was thrown down to the earth, he also took a third of the angels with him. You know, a third of the angels is this. Um, Revelations 12, 4 says that, who then became the demons and the cohorts in this world. Uh, verse 3, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, Satan, uh, Lucifer, referring to the devil, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, referring to the angels, and did cast them to the earth. So we've got, a, we've got an adversary. We have, you and I have an adversary. We win. I mean, I used to play a lot of football, so, and I love to win. I hated to lose. I mean, I never heard of the word lose. I would rather have done anything but lose a ball game. We're, we're, we win. We're winners. The word of God gives us the authority and the right to win. We got to act on it. We need to live it. We need to be it. There are only two powers in the whole world. There's two powers in the whole world. Two powers in the whole world. God's power and Satan's power. God sent us Jesus, the Messiah, to the earth to destroy the works of the devil. If we're living it. Now, I, you know, I'm, I come up short too, but we need to work harder. And it's, you call it work, it's not work. The more you study, the more fun it is. The more you get involved in the word of God, the more fun it is. The more you pray, the, the more peace you have in your heart. The more you're doing for God, the more you're doing for yourself. If you're studying, you're making yourself strong. You're building yourself up. You're helping your, your family. You're helping your community. We are supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be the light. Everybody's supposed to look at us and say, wow, I want some of that. I want to be like that. I want to have that peace that that man's carrying. Now, 1 John 3, 8. We got some, uh, we got 10 minutes left here. Hmm. John, 1 John 3, 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. You know, God loved the world so much that he sent his only son into the world that it might be saved, that you and I could be saved. He wants everybody to be saved. You know, the thing about it is this world's so upside down. There's so much corrupt people out there, and we know them, we see them. We know a lot of them. We don't know all of them, but we know a lot of them. But God is forgiving. If they would repent, God would take them back into the fold. So we have to be able to forgive them. We cannot be grudging. We cannot be judging them. We cannot, we can disagree with them. We can be praying for them. We can bring coals of fire down on their head if we're, if we're in that certain circumstances. But we can't 
hold grudges against him. God's mercy continues, lasts forever. So our mercy has to be, we cannot be judging. Don't let yourself judge. Now, don't be, don't, in other words, don't get yourself caught in sin. We can work against these people. We can protest. We can show our displeasures. But we can't condemn them. You and I do not have the right to condemn others. We make a lot of mistakes by the words that come out of our mouth against our brothers. Now, we need to ask each other for forgiveness of whatever we might have done. And so I'm going to ask right now for anybody to listen to me, if I have ever come against you, that you know of it, forgive me. Please forgive me. I'm sorry for ever coming, saying, doing anything to hurt my brothers and sisters. I apologize. Now let's go on. Uh, Hebrews. Now, um, we're going to read Hebrews uh, 2, 6 through 8. A couple of verses here. Let's see what it says here. Hebrews 2, 6 and 8. And someone somewhere testified saying, what is man that you should remember him or the son of man that you should be concerned about him? You made him lower than God. Some, some books say lower than angels. Uh, for a little while. You crowned him in glory and honor. You made all things subject under his feet. Oh, there it is again. We are given power and authority. You made him all things subject to us. No, uh, Satan's main topic against us is trying, he's trying to tempt us. He's trying to lie to us, accuse us into temptation so that we would be tempted into falling away from God, falling and in, in getting into sin. We know if we end sin, we are on the outside of God and that we have to repent. God says, be ye holy as I am holy. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. That's not a problem. It just takes a little effort. God says, do just do my word. Just obey my word. Obey my word. Now, the thing about it is, um, James 4, 7, and 8, and then we're going to go to Ephesians. And hopefully we, oh, I got some stuff to go through here. Um, we're going to, James 4, 7, and 8. Submit yourselves there to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, repent, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye devil-minded. Just repent. If we don't follow God's word, we're going to be crucified. We're going to be beat up, chewed up. The lion's got teeth. He's, uh, the, the lion does have teeth, and the devil has teeth, and we're going to be chewed up, and we bleed. We bleed. I know I bleed. I've seen it. Now, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, we're going to do that. This is the armor of God. I hope this helps right here. Again, we are instructed to be strong, resist the devil, and put on the armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Yeah, this is powerful. This is powerful. You know, I've, I've talked to some people who said, I don't believe in the armor of God. Oh, my gosh, I want to cry. I want to cry for those people. It It, it works. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The tricks of the devil. The tricks. The meanness. Twelve. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able, to be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having, your, here we go, here we go. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness is a defensive weapon. 
defensive. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, defensive. And taking, and all, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Again, defensive, shield. And take the helmet of salvation. Again, defensive weapon. And then the sword of the spirit. All of a sudden, we have an offensive weapon, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit is our offense against the wiles of the devil. The word of God. Praying always, 18, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all, saint, for all saints. Now we must watch our words. Our words are creative and power. Our words are seed and they get planted and then they harvest. So if we're planting good seeds, we have a good harvest. You know, the book tells us, God tells us, Jesus tells us. Um, we better be careful of our, what we say out of our mouth because the devil is gonna help us plant those seeds. We're gonna have a harvest, now, we're going to have a harvest for God in our words, or we're going to have a harvest for the Satan and his cohorts by our words. So we need to be careful of how we're speaking about our brothers, our sisters, about those that we care about, supposedly care about. Love your neighbors as I shall. Hmm. How about that? Now, we went through the... the, the the uh, armor of God, Matthew 10, 1, 10, 1. We're going to have to hurry up here. And when he had called unto his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. I'm going to read that again. Jesus gave us power. You can read it in Matthew 10, 1. You can read it in Matthew 16, 17 and 18. We all know these things. You can read it in 12, Revelations 12, 11. You can read it in John 15, 16. It says here, 15, 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I have ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever ye shall ask in the Father's name, he may give you. We need to stand for our Lord and God. If we want to be protected, write these verses down. 1 John 4, 8. 1 John 4, 16. Now, I, I, during the, I've been studying for a couple of days on this lesson, and I, I read the book of first john the whole book four pages probably less than four pages and it was marvelous take this week and read first john you're going to learn some stuff i did i got reminded of stuff it's, it was marvelous um we need to probably close here we're getting on, on time um i got a couple more things to say but i'd love to spend more time with you if um I hope this is okay. Uh, if uh, people want to contact me, they can contact me through uh, uh, Prophet Darren if he so if he so thinks that's okay. But anyway, we're going to close in prayer. Uh, I hope I brought some word to you to, through the Messiah that would be helpful to you. We have, and we are winners. You know, I, I, years ago when I was in the church, no, wasn't there there very long. I knew it was a fool, but they would say, you're a winner, you're a winner. I didn't know what that meant. I know what it means now. You know the word of God. You can live by the word of God. You can talk the word of God. Anyway, let's uh, close in prayer. Lord, Father God, we come to you in prayer and thanksgiving. We ask you, we thank you for the, for the word that you've given us. We thank you for the, for the affirmation that heard it that could be encouraged. We ask you to encourage them, Lord, encourage them. Open their hearts, let them love each other as your word says. 
Help them to love you. You. Help them to Deuteronomy 4, 5, 6, and 8. There's so much beautiful words there. And it talks about the latter days in, in chapter 4, Deuteronomy. It talks about the latter days. It talks about the end times. It talks about the tribulation. And it talks about the way out of it. And it gives us hope and love. And it makes us winners. Just help us to read it. Lord, Father, God, we ask your blessings on the Ephraimites that are known Ephraimites, that are unknown Ephraimites. Let them have ears to hear what you're calling out, what you're wishing for, what you want to happen. Help us to be your ministers. Help us to be, and you have already ordained us. Help us to recognize that and be obedient to your word. We ask your blessings on the prophets and all that they are and all that they're here and and bless them that they would lead us, guide us, and correct us into your holy word. We thank you for it in the name of Yeshua. And they all said, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. You know, we love you. We just love you. I miss y'all. Love to see y'all.